tried to take Jared out of it and let Sam. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying I succeeded. I certainly <laughs> don't think I hit a home run. But um, I tried to make sure that Sam was the moment. You know, Jared knew it was the final episode. Jared knew it was the final scene in this location or with that person or with this person or whatever. Jared knew that in six days I was going to have to be packed up out of my apartment and driving south across the border with Ackles to get back home. But I, I tried to make sure Sam didn't know. And I tried to treat it as if, um, as if it was a pilot, you know. Uh, we looked at each other. You and I looked at each other. Uh, I know that Friday, um, yep. the, our last day on the sound stages. And we, and we looked at each other and we were like, hey, just another day at the office, man. Yeah. This is just another day at the office. Let's do the work. Yeah. And we did. Yeah, we did. It was hard not to allow that emotion, knowing how heavy this was and knowing it was our last day walking these sound stages. It was hard to, to keep that at bay and at, in check. But I think another reason why, you know, he and I have worked together so well for so long is because we, we do bolster one another and we do kind of like, check in constantly like hey it's just another day at the office let's get this done we got this yeah and uh and it was, it was a really really awesome day it was probably one of my most favorite days in 15 years which is bizarre when you see what we shot but yeah uh, yeah 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 no kidding well i know you guys can't give away what happens obviously but what feeling would you use to describe dean and sam's ending Content. Mm -hmm. yeah. Satisfaction. Yeah. Those are two very good words for a series finale. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we had talked about a series finale for years. You know, every season it's like, hey, if this were the last season, if we don't get picked up, how would we, like, what, how do you think it should end? How do I think it should end? What should be, if we do come back, what should it look like? We spend hours and hours and hours together every day, every week, every month, uh, for nine months out of the year at least. And, so we've obviously talked about it. That had been said, the way it did end, um, I certainly feel like I, I'm proud to hang my hat on that. Um, I'm, I'm really happy with the way it did end. And we had talked about it, you know, six ways from Sunday. Um, and the, the, you know, ultimately you have, to, you have to air an episode of television and you can't just go like, well, we were thinking about this too. And hey, we did want to do that too. And hey, this would have been fun. What do you think? So you had to commit. You had to commit. Yeah, yeah, you had to commit, make a decision. And so we all did. And uh, I couldn't be more happy. Yeah. You two are obviously going to see each other again at some point. You live in the same city. But what are you going to miss most about working with each other going forward as you go into new projects? I'm going to take care of you. I got you. It's my job, right? Watch after my pain in the ass, little brother. Man. The shorthand. The shorthand. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ah. And also the confidence that I can push myself. You know, we've, we've both done scenes with each other, obviously. Dean. Sam. Sam. Dean. But we've also both done scenes without each other, with, with a, a, a guest star uh, on a show where Dean's pretexting as an FBI agent or I'm pretending to be a, a doctor or something. Um, and I don't want to say I baby it with other actors and actresses, but I, I pull my game back. You can't hurt me, not without hurting your little brother. You know, if you've been playing tennis with somebody for 15 years or basketball or doing jujitsu or something, you know how hard you can push. Whereas if you just walk in onto a court with somebody you've never played before, it's like, okay, well, I gotta feel them out because I don't want to just start dunking on the guy and it's not a game. And so with Jensen, I know I can push as hard as I possibly can and harder, and that he'll push back just as hard. Oh, easy, Tiger. And we'll bring out you know, different aspects of the scene, different facets of what the characters are going through more than, uh, more than I have with anybody else. We don't get to quit in this family. This family is all we have ever had. Well, then we got nothing. There's a nuance, I think, that he and I are able to tap into, not only with our characters, but with the relationship that these characters have with each other and in, in, in every scene. And, you know, a lot of times those nuances are not written on the page. And that is, I think, something that we pride ourselves in being able to bring to the character and to the story and to the show. Uh, and, and that's something that he and I don't really even need to talk about. It's stuff that uh, presents itself to, our, to us 
almost in the middle of a scene. We're so comfortable and available to each other for letting those kinds of moments happen that they happen all the time. And I, I'm going to miss uh, having that confidence with somebody that, that I can just allow those moments to happen and you can seize them. Because a lot of times actors can be overly rehearsed or, or they, they don't know what that is, so they just stick to the page. And, or they don't um, listen. Like some, most of them, they just Or don't they don't listen. listen. I'll miss having that. Again, it just kind of goes back to that, to that shorthand, to that relationship that he and I have had for so long. Don't you dare think that there is anything past or present that I would put in front of you. Finally, if you could go back and talk to the Dean and Sam that we met in the pilot, what would you say to them? I can't do this alone. Yes, you can. Yeah. Well, I don't want to. Beware of demons. <laughs> yeah. Uh, avoid hell. <laughs> um, and watch out for each other and uh and be careful who you befriend yeah there's a lot of there's probably a lot of things that they should have known but uh yeah, but then no. again it wouldn't have been the story that it was the end hey guys all right pam thank you <laughs> hey guys. thank you so much big fan of the show you guys thank were awesome you, thank you. bye so thank you thanks guys, pam. guys no. Hey guys, are you literally in baby? Are you? <laughs> what? Are you in a car? Yes. Yeah, you yeah. are in and the, the Wi-Fi in baby is not as good as it used to be. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever been in the back seat? <laughs> I've been in the back seat once. Hey, Julie. Hey, who said that? I, I, I don't even have to. I can't even see you, Julie, but I knew that was you. Uh... <laughs> There Me you too, are. Quite a few times. Hey, no, Sebastian. That's that, it. Doesn't count. The cameras aren't rolling. <laughs> doesn't, doesn't count. We're doing a little drive-in movie tonight. Yeah. Oh, you've been listening to your dad. Oh, you guys literally. You were trying to get on for what, forty-five Jim? minutes. How you? long have you been living in the Sorry. car? Good, Afra. <laughs> Yeah, it yeah, took it a little intense. longer than they... not 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 going well with the brewery. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's going great. I actually uh, finished three or four beers while trying to get onto the Zoom call. <laughs> That's good. Drinking the profits. Way to go. That's it. <laughs> it's called enjoying the profits, Bob. Yeah. It's it's a it's a, I don't know how you guys do it working, working and parenting. This is this is new territory. You you go out into the garage and you hide in the car. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is the quietest place in our house. And our kids have no idea where we are. They don't even know we have this car. Oh, Another yeah, place. This place. Which actor is most like his character? Jim Beaver. Jim He's Beaver. <laughs> Jim Beaver. Hey, don't, don't don't skew the audience. He's crotchety, angry, and probably died like 20 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Bob is on this call, Jerry. <laughs> no, Jim Beaver, Jim Beaver, not Bob Singer, not actual Bob. Now, Bob's gone, it looks like. Yeah, you can afford to trash me. <laughs> he did an Irish exit. They just, they did an Irish exit. They left. Smart. Yeah. <laughs> Not smart that they left, but just smart to never. I'm going to do a, a Scottish exit. I'm going to go to. This just came up. Jim Beaver won. Which actor is most like his character? 50%. The second person was Jensen at 29%. Then Misha at 11%. Jared was 10%. So Sam is like smart wow. and reserved. Yeah. So Jared is the opposite, I suppose. The healthy intellectual. <laughs> <laughs> the salad eating intellectual who does good for the world. Jared is the opposite. Uh, good times. Thanks, fans. Uh, is, does anybody know where in the show we are right now? We're in a commercial uh, break, but I I'm don't know what's happening. I have it on mute. How do we? Oh, did your Canadian just come out there, Bree? Oh, you know. Oh, you... it's a commercial there. Yeah, it's on yeah, mute. It's a uh, commercial now. Here, here in Saskatchewan, it's uh, we're yeah, we've got a commercial going for Corner Gas. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. The animated good. series. <laughs> no, tell us where you guys are though, because we'll we'll figure that out. Yeah, it is commercial, right? Uh, yeah. Yes. 
that? But where, yeah, where on the where on the Misha stream are we? <laughs> Misha? No idea. Like sixteen minutes? So well, no, 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 no. Twenty-seven minutes. Twenty-seven minutes. Twenty-seven. Got it. Twenty-eight oh, minutes. Man. Approximately two glasses of wine in. So <laughs> I wherever like it. that is. I like it, Julie. <laughs> No, 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 no. I have some link that Misha sent that's without commercials. So it's a total of 42 minutes. So we had like 22 minutes. Because everyone needed a more of a challenge with this, Misha? <laughs> yeah, I mean, the other great thing about it is not none of us have been looking at the screen at all. So all I saw was Jensen run by in purple pajamas and oh, Alex okay. dinner that's with some grandma lady. She's a, one, she's a one nymph, just believe. <laughs> Misha, is this stream still live? Uh huh. Yeah, this is totally live. Okay. Oh, oh, cool. awesome. I was about to Anybody say else? things, and I'm glad I asked that question first. <laughs> Damn it! If you say them, if you say them quietly, no one will hear. That's right. I thought this right. was just one of our cocktail zooms. Yeah, this should be a, a <laughs> weekly cocktail zoom. I mean, I if love we're not just having cocktails. Wow. My cocktail's empty. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I love the show, but I'm content to watch Matt Cohen's uh, feed just basically forever. Uh, What's Andy he doing? Matt. It's I, that's Matt, a good say story. something. Oh, there's a lot of Andy. Work at night. It's He's just got a lot of accessories on his head, you know, like his hair. All of them. All there's of the pods. There's grandma things. Yeah, it's yeah. just everything's. Okay. And then it's just a lot. Coco Chanel would say, take one off, man. <laughs> <laughs> I have nothing to respond to that. I have absolutely nothing to respond to that comment. You win. Man, I mean, no judgment here. I have Rice Krispies treat, a Halloween Rice Krispies treat. Yeah. That looks great. Oh, so good. It's so good. <laughs> is it shaped like a candy corn? Yeah. This uh, is why they said Jared is not the same as Sam, by the way. This. <laughs> what you're doing right now. Yeah, I lost that, huh? He gave it to me. Uh huh. All right. Where's, 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 are you guys spending a lot of time in the Impala these days? <laughs> uh, I mean, we went to Starbucks this morning. I think that in was Impala? pretty fun. Yeah. yeah. We woke up Did our neighbors because it? it's really loud. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. It doesn't have plates, seatbelts, yeah. <laughs> legality. What could go wrong? Yeah. yeah. There's no title or insurance on it. But mostly, yeah. we just, like, mostly we just use it to make out. Oh, oh, oh It's been Yuck. years. Yuck, uh, gross. Right now, we're going to see you make out. Yeah, do a little show for us, guys. Okay. <laughs> okay. Oh, oh, my gosh. Whoa, take it easy. Okay, all right, kill the Zoom. Kill the Zoom. This is cut YouTube. Cut YouTube. <laughs> there are legs. Everywhere, there's a sparkly glass. Oh, it's gold. And yes, I'm wearing your socks, in case you noticed on that. I noticed. Oh. What? Well, Jared, your fingernail, on our feed, your, she just misses butter. I got him, I got him yeah. back. Oh, yeah, she that happens. your fingernail off. You just got to oh. good. I just got a manicure. Are we ahead? No, we can't be ahead. Because we're, we paused ours. 40 oh, minutes in a bake yeah. off. Chuck Abaddon, Rowena Dean. Ooh. Wow. Um, I know who I voted for. <laughs> Rowena would definitely make some magic brownies. Okay. Chuck is good. Oh. Oh. <laughs> in that case. You can do whatever you want. Misha, you did you create these questions? Uh -oh. I feel like it's a, it's a Chuck secret skill. No, I think this, I, I don't know who's making these right now. I assume it's uh, it's Charlie. Oh, Charlie. No, I have nothing to do with it. Charlie's obsessed with baking, so. <laughs> <laughs> what's, the last, what's the last thing that you baked, Charlie? I'd rather not say. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 I get it. Because I was like just going to say, oh, yeah, I made some peanut butter brownies yesterday, and they were pretty dope. He made brownies. Oh, keto brownies are great. With dope? dope? Not with dope, but I guess that's Charlie's kind. Bye bye. <laughs> I gotta log out, guys. Irish exit. Bye. <laughs>
Hey, Jen. Uh, yeah, you're uh, you're you're doing Walker with this guy. Are you out of your mind? Nepotism. I mean, oh, I don't know. I'm, I'm tired of, of being at home. Do you not remember working with him before? <laughs> Yeah, she has she has a uh, great memory loss, which is why she married me in the first place. So, I will say that's our best relationship is the working yeah, one. So yeah, <laughs> going yeah. back to it. You want to keep me busy. When um, when are you coming, Jimbo? Yeah. When are you getting out to Texas? I don't know. You know, I uh uh I, all my family's from there is gone now, so I gotta I'm waiting on invitations. Were you born? Well, you're a real fucking ray of sunshine, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mean dead. Everybody I know is dead. I'm going to die. I'm Jim dead Beaver. Dead said they're gone. Well, this is it for me. I'll never see y'all again. <laughs> no, I'm, I'd am i be happy to come back to Texas. I just got, I just want somebody else to pay the plane fare. Um, I just don't want to die there. Because I'm going to die. Were you born here? <laughs> no, I was born in Wyoming, but I grew up in, in Dallas. I love Wyoming even more. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with Dallas? What's wrong? Yeah, it was. Well, I'm going to die there, <laughs> Jensen. Probably soon. It's been nice talking to you. Governor, <laughs> plot picked out now. It's real nice. <laughs> Have a nice life. It, it's cheaper burial grounds in Texas. <laughs> I've looked into it. I'm so glad I dropped in. I know. I'm glad. <laughs> Because the next place I drop is going to be six feet under. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Jim. Please don't beat me up. I can tell. Guys, Spate is still trying to get in. Which I oh, actually, no. it's so lovely. He's trying to get in. Yeah. But I, I blocked his particular link. I know, so I know, yeah. In, but don't tell him that. But it's yeah, just, it's he's just telling us he's trying to get in. He's actually like having a good night. Exactly. That's actually the smartest way to get out of one of these things. It's like, ah, I can't get in. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's what Alex did. He texted me. Alex was like, I can't get in. And I texted Charlie. I'm like, help Alex out. And Alex is like, oh, that's, I, I'm good. I tried. I tried. <laughs> yeah, he's like, I tried once. I'm out. See you guys. I, I got my man's waiting yeah. for me. I paid my dues. Wait, turn your phone, turn it on, like, uh, mute it. You okay, see him? Yeah. <laughs> oh, hey! Hey! Hello! Hello. He lives. Richard the Spade. I thought Richard we tried Spade. to block you. <laughs> Is this a recording of Richard Spade from, like, a month ago? Yeah, yeah. It's a proof of life video. <laughs> they're, they're treating me well. I'm well fed. They're not punishing me. Hey, Spade, Spade, Spade. You should say, this is my proof of life video. We'll all crack up. <laughs> I would be stealing David Hayden Jones Thunder because he looked like he was held hostage that entire time. Where are you? This should be a drinking game. I, I, I'm actually, this is going to shock my friends, but I'm actually, I'm actually in Los Angeles as opposed to the hills of Oregon have actually returned to civilization. <clears throat> really? Well, you don't look it. Yeah, why do you have that beard? <laughs> oh, no, I don't. I, I'm not saying my look has returned to civilization. It's happened my, my whereabouts happen to have. Got it. Got it, my bad. <laughs> you dipped back into civilization for some rations. <laughs> some MRE. Has, has the world changed since you left? <laughs> <laughs> that fewer people are scared these days because there are fewer people on the streets that see you or is it kind of similar to where it was before quarantine well they're really freaked out now because they assumed i was dead and now i've just re-emerged and now they think the end is nigh got it <laughs> or they just think uh eh, 2020 <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, an another creepy jerk roaming the streets <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. 
Rich, it looks like you're wearing a kimono. Is that just a white? Because I'm wearing a kimono. Oh, okay. I think it's a I'm wearing a kimono, you dunce. Dress code, right? I thought it was uh, formal Japanese attire. I get that. No, you got it, buddy. You got it. Oh, uh, 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 you muted him. That's nice. And I find it fascinating that Billy Moran, who says nothing, is dead center the whole time. <laughs> like, with the best thing, <laughs> <thing, laughs> nine guitars, <laughs> swooping hair. And just, cool. <laughs> <laughs> Love you guys. <laughs> I have no control. I have no control. <laughs> Is this your home, Billy? It looks amazing. Or is that a, is that, are we on a virtual background? He's at the Guitar Center. He's at Guitar Center in Hollywood. I had to get a job at Guitar Center. You broke in. You got some great models. You got a lot of great, it'll be, it'll be, it'll be great. It'll be great if like a salesman leans in and goes, uh, sir, we're closing. We're going to have to. <laughs> yeah. We got to wrap this up. <laughs> Billy, sir, like, like all guitars must go. I got to get this all of them. They're false there. I'm a stay-at-home musician. I like it. Where are we at in the episode? <laughs> I think it's we finished over. like an hour ago. Yeah. yeah, I think it's long gone. Who's left? Yeah, we got we got a few minutes left. Yeah, mine it's says like long. Left. It should be ten minutes left. So, Amy, how are you doing? I didn't really understand the you know i didn't i didn't know what kind of an audience we were reaching until i think it was after season 1 there was a huge uk push for for the release of the show and um and they did some amazing uh marketing out there and i'd flown out there to be a part of this like kind of rudimentary comic con uh so to speak where there was multiple actors and talent from multiple genre shows and you know i was I was the one guy, I don't know why Jared didn't come with me on this one, but I was the, uh, I was the lone supernatural representative. And, um, you know, keep in mind, we'd only been on for one season. Uh, we just finished, it hadn't even fully aired yet. And I go over to, to London and I do this, uh, this event and it was me plus maybe 12 other actors from again, various shows. And the crowd response was like jaw dropping when, when I came out for the show. You know, I and mean, we're talking like Buffy and Angel and 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 Smallville and and uh, and all of these you know shows that were well established and um, and a lot of and people were super super hyped up on Supernatural and that's when I, my eyes like you know went wide and I immediately called Jared and I was like, dude, I I, I think people are watching this um, and so that's kind of the first moment I noticed that we had. Uh, that there was, it was reaching an audience and it was reaching a rabid audience. And that's when I got, you know, I, I got even more excited about the show. I'd say personally, just, I mean, that's, you know, uh, growing up, I, I was in my mid twenties when I started the show and now I'm in my, you know, early forties. Those are some, those are some pretty formidable years. I mean, this was basically the majority of my adult life uh, spent on the show. So a lot has happened. I mean, I, I, I went to Vancouver when I was, uh, you know, again, in my, in my mid twenties, single and, and, you know, the, the world was my oyster at this point. And I, I had a new show and I was, I basically put my life on in LA on hold. And I was like, see you guys, I'm going to Vancouver to shoot this cool show. Uh, thinking that, you know, in a couple of years, I'd come back and unpause it and get back to life as normal and go hang out with all my friends. And we'd talk about this cool show that I just did. Uh, and now I'm, you know, I don't even live in California anymore. I'm married. I've got three kids, uh, you know, dad, husband. So a lot has, uh, a lot has changed personally for me. Um, you know, I've, I've grown as far as, you know, just, just the ideas and, and my, my thoughts of life and ideology and all of that kind of stuff is, is just, as you do, you know, my entire thirties, it's kind of when you find out, uh, who you are as a person, um, and all of that occurred while doing this show. Um, then from a professional standpoint, you know, the character of Dean, he, he really, he grew as well. I kind of, you know, I feel like we kind of grew together over the years. Um, and before he was this kind of, uh, you know, gunslinging, crazy blue collar, unlikely hero. 
Uh, and I feel like he's always kept that, but it's just matured into a um, more of a paternal uh, type of situation. You know, he, he feels, and you'll, you'll see that a lot in, um, in these final few episodes that we're, that we start, uh, start airing tonight um, that he, he has, he has taken this kind of father figure role, not necessarily to his brother, but I think just in general. Um, and he cares with a, with a love uh, that is that is more paternal. I, I feel I got asked that you know is this emotional? You, you know, you guys holding it together all right? Uh, for me personally, it was um, you know it was it was just kind of business as usual. I, I didn't want to I didn't want to put too much pressure, too much strain, or too much thought, or too much emotion into uh, into this final season because I didn't want it to change what we've been doing for 15 years. Uh, and I also didn't want to, you know, foreshadow the, the, the what was, what was, uh, coming ahead. Um, so I just wanted to keep it kind of, uh, business as usual, uh, keep my head down, keep doing the work like I've always done, doing the work the way that I've done that's got us to this point. And so I, I, uh, I don't know if that was my way of dealing with it was just suppressing it and just sweeping it under the rug. I mean, maybe I took a page out of Dean's, uh, Dean's handbook of how to deal with the uh, emotions, but, uh, I certainly, certainly didn't, um, uh, didn't really get overly emotional about the goodbye and about this being the last, you know, so it's the last first day, you know, it's the last time we're going to drive the cars or the last time we're going to film in this set. It's the last time I'm going to film a scene with this character. Um, you know, I just kind of kept it professional and, and tried to keep my eye on the eye on the prize and and uh, keep steering us towards the finish line. Um, so I kind of feel like it was less a uh, a long goodbye and more of a uh, you know the fourth quarter of a of a Super Bowl game. So I was like, guys, who wants to play video games? So right. they're playing video <laughs> games right now, and that will last all night. So I'm. Right. Fine. <laughs> Hey, right, you're well, going out after this. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll go out through the window so they don't see me leave. <laughs> Smart move, pal. Smart move. Hey, Jared. What's up, Jared? Hey, can you see me? Hi, guys. Hi. Oh, my God, it's so good to see you. You look uh, like you're in a trailer. Don't lie. Uh, I am in a trailer. I'm in between <laughs> things. So, Ooh. Um, Are you wearing a supernatural uh, jacket on the set of Walker, Texas Ranger? Of course I am. <laughs> that's, that's confusing. I, I, have, I, I have to represent, man. I have to. I, it didn't, uh, honest to God, this is day four. It didn't feel right to show up to the new set without something from Supernatural. So I've been wearing like Supernatural shirts and stuff. It's just like, in case y'all didn't know, I'm going to drop my own name. Uh, very douchey. Hi, Ashley. Hi, how are you? I think actually, Jared and Jensen, I think Texas is vying for that slot right now. Oh my God. Like, oh like, yeah, like, we should so. talk about that. We should. Even though we have one ballot box per county. Yeah. What are those lines like? <laughs> Days? I, I mean, I, went, I just went and voted in person. And yeah. was, I walked yeah. right in, walked right up, hmm. did my vote, and walked right out. And there was wow. nothing, there was no hassle, there was no line, there was no nothing. And it's just, I mean, I, I, I think a lot of the fear a lot of the, this it, it, there it's out there, and those there are lines. But I feel like if you just like we just went across town and went to one that's not right next to us, we're like, where's the place that we think is going to be the least amount of people at? And we and we actually had a, a friend who had just gone there, and they were like, come here, come here right now. There's no one here, so that yeah, helps. Yeah, too. and they're all they're, as long yeah. as you're in the right state, you're okay. So yeah, we just found a place there wasn't a line. Yeah. yeah. And here we do have, we have 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. And I think we have, I mean, Ackles, you probably know this too. I think we have 40 or 50 spots here in and around Austin. So, I mean, there, there's one ballot box in Travis County and one ballot box in Hayes County and Bear County and all that. Mm -hmm. But as far as going in, we, we do have 12 hour days. And I know here, you know, we're, we're, we're I'm, I'm in between scenes right now shooting Walker, uh, but we're doing uh, truncated hours on voting day so that those who haven't been able to either mail in their ballot or right. vote early, they're going to have a chance to go vote. And we're, we're making that very crucial and critical, um, especially because this year has been very interesting. To uh, be involved here and to help, you know, you have a lot of things that you could do. You're all celebrities. You've all been doing great. Uh, what gets you involved in this and motivates you? 
I'll start just because I'm inspired by both of what uh, what you both just said. And one of the things y'all both touched on was was empathy. And Ashley, you went on to say a word that is very um, important to me, which is decency. And so that's one of the things that as a father, I have an eight-year-old boy, a six-year-old boy, and a three-year-old girl. And, you know, I watch the news and that's uh, as we're preparing breakfast or lunch or dinner or putting them in Zoom calls. And there will inevitably be some sort of like Chiron on the screen. They're learning how to read. So they want to read every Chiron. And then we're like, ah, oh, don't read those. Don't read those. And I just can't, I, I, I feel like both sides of the aisle have to agree on one thing. We have to have decency. And I think, you know, the, the empathy becomes subjective to some sort, you know, it allows somebody to say like, well, they're, they're empathetic to those who want to express this value or this belief. Um, and kindness uh, to some degree as well. Uh, people can use it subjectively of like, well, they're being kind to their family or to their followers, or to people who uh, heart their tweets. Whereas decency, I feel is more objective and universal. And there's just something that's been severely lacking for the last four years. And that's decency. That's the ability to also say, and Ashley, your, your father and Senator, your friend and colleague, has for decades now ex expressed and shown decency and an ability and a desire to reach across the aisle, the proverbial aisle, but also to reach out to people that he doesn't necessarily agree with, but he listens mm -hmm. to and values their opinions because they also in some way, shape or form uh, represent a, a larger portion of the population than just that single person talking to them. Mm -hmm. So the idea of keeping decency and I, you know, there's, there's a, there's a there's a proverb be ye kind um and just the kindness and the decency and the empathy to kind of borrow the words even though some can be kind of stolen by uh, certain people but i think decency for me is really what made it even more of a no-brainer than it already was which is let's just be decent to one each other to, to, to each other and to one another um and so that is why this is so important that that's the main reason here and now at least uh there have been many main reasons why it's so important but uh as we speak today and obviously we are just a handful of days away from uh the election the official election so i feel like let's just desire decency because we're going to have disagreements and that's okay that's necessary that's necessary to figure out where the chips will fall you know if you believe this and i believe that and we kind of get rid of um our subjective uh thoughts then we can find a common ground but let's remain decent in the meantime and that's something that i think is very obvious should be very obvious to both sides of the proverbial aisle as to what something uh has been missing in the last four years of our political discourse yep yeah i'll i'll just add to uh i'll add to what jared said in, in that uh Decency, absolutely. I think that's something that that is uh, very important to me. And again, as a, as a father, much like Jared is, uh, I, that is a, a quality that I uh, um, I really strive to uh, to instill in my children and in, and in myself. And it's things that I look for in friends. And and but uh, on top of that, going more into the political realm, um, there's a sense that I get that is you versus them or us versus them in, in this particular uh, situation that we find ourselves in. Um, and this, this shouldn't be a president that is just placating to a portion of Americans. Uh, you know, I really like that, uh, the, the, the tagline that, that Joe has been using and the fact that he's going to be a president to all Americans. Um, and I think that that is something that we have, have been desperately missing in this particular administration is, uh, it is, it is not a president to all Americans. It is a president to some Americans. And those particular Americans have now gotten so riled up that they're going, ha ha, we win, you lose. Well, the people that they say are losing are also Americans. So what does that say? And, and I, I just feel like it's so divided and it's, it's been a greater divide than I've ever experienced in my adult life. And I just feel like we need to have somebody that can fill that divide, that can bring that divide back together, that can make us all feel like we're on the same team. Because right now we are not. Yeah. That's starting to, what are the words we're using? Lean or tend, possibly purple. 
I also want to take this time to extend an olive branch to people who did vote for the president in 2016. And there were a lot of promises made. Mm -hmm. There were a lot of things um, that were promised and I didn't buy them, but some people did. Um, but by now it's been four years. It should be clear to everybody that we've been conned. I, you know, you did what you did. It's fine. We all make choices and sometimes those are not the correct choices. But let's learn from our decisions and learn from our mistakes. And not, I'm not saying let's that I was one of those. I'm just saying as a group to bring to make it as, as bipartisan and apolitical as possible. You were promised a lot of things. Uh, this is the longest uh, I IRS analysis of all time for his tax returns. You know, like just you can go down the list as far as things that were promised, uh, things that were kind of bandied around from the pulpit uh, that haven't been done. So this is the time to to take your chips, you know, if you're in Vegas and go, you know, what? I've lost a lot. I'm not going to lose any more now. I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and walk away. Mm -hmm. um, the, the promises that were made were not promises that were kept, mm -hmm. um, nor were those promises maybe what was best in the first place. But that's a, that's beside the point. Uh, the idea being that we've all been looking at a, a fraudster. Uh, so it's time to go, you know what, we need somebody decent, somebody who cares to touch on what Ackle said about every American. Uh, and not just, and I will say, and I think, Senator, you touched on this, you know, we've, we've, we were on a show for many years and we're tall, white, heterosexual men and the, the, the world is, has been very kind to us. Uh, I feel like I'm cheating and I feel like the coach keeps on uh, giving me more cheat codes and I'm finally going like, dude, I don't need any more cheat codes. Like, let's, I, I want to win a fair fight. I don't want to win because I'm, because the, the, the rules are so wildly uh, weighed in my favor that I can't lose. Like, let's make this fair. Let's help kind of make uh, everybody have a chance at their degree of success or happiness or purpose or whatever that is. Um, so I think it's just time that we all go, you know what, four years ago is four years ago. Look at this brand new, uh, look at the record, look at what's been promised um, and what hasn't been kept and what's turned out to be blatant lies um, and move forward from there. Right. Heal our nation and our reputation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which, which, I mean, we've got Jared and, <clears throat> and Misha and I have, have, uh, have had the privilege of traveling quite often and traveling around the world and, and seeing fans and meeting people. And, uh, you know, obviously that's all been stunted this year because of, of COVID, but, you know, I still keep in contact with people overseas and, and we obviously filmed up in Canada for 15 years. So, uh, our, our wonderful neighbors to the North, um, our, our international reputation is really sad. Uh, and, and I know that <clears throat> a lot of people in, in Trump's camp think, well, you know, Forget them. It's America first. Who cares what they think? Well, we're all in this together, whether you like it or not. Uh, you know, this is one world, and it's the only one we got. So mm -hmm. um, it's it's it, it is time for that healing, and it is time for that reputation to get back on on what it used to be a, a shining. Also, beacon. Sure. also I want to hear the uh, knock knock joke. I want to oh, hear it. What okay, here, it? We okay. here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Real quick, knock knock. Who's there? Okay. Interrupting sloth. Interrupting sloth. <laughs> What? Interrupting sloth who? <laughs> it's funny you're in person because you're moving really slowly. It's really awkward. Whatever. We should have we should have ended it before. I I about how they cut things <laughs> out of things. I apologize. Them. Have you ever had scenes cut, Jared? All of my scenes. <laughs> have all, all of my scenes have been cut. Clearly okay. he has. I had a one-man show. They just cut it all. I hear it. It's all free. Right. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Thank we'll you. see thank each you other at a better it. day. I yes, very thank hope you. I would love to thank see you. you guys. Ashley, we're so excited for you. Oh, I'm so thank you this. so much for all you're doing. Thank you to everybody. Thank you all very much. Thank hey, you. Everyone, yep. Thank you. See you. Bye. Bye, Bye guys.